The morning after the night before, eh? Even I had a glass of champagne last night. Well, it was just that fizzy wine that would in the fridge. But anyway, fantastic result for Wednesday. And thanks to you lot as well, because you've subscribed. I've hit 1,000 subscribers. Delighted with that. Can't thank you enough for that. Weren't sure a lot of people would want to watch me sat here talking crap, but you have. Thanks for that. I've reached my goal. I had set myself that target. And to celebrate, I did have that Jam Rolly Poly that I got my eye on. It's got to be one of the best puddings in the world. You just get that. I love it when you get that slightly crispy edge on it as well. And then you've got that soft jam in the middle and custard. It's just marvellous. And that's all thanks to you. Anyway, let's get on with the uh, match review, shall we? It's funny. When I started doing this, I thought, nobody's going to watch this. Nobody's going to watch this sort of thing. But you are watching it. And I did have a lovely message on my Twitter thing the other day from a lady called Jane, who's in America, who said... She loves it and she plays it with her husband because he's visually impaired. And so me talking through this game, I thought, well, why is anyone going to, you know, listen to me doing this? Because they can watch it, they can watch our lives. Well, some people can't. And so that's really cheered me up, that, because there's a lot of nastiness in the world and something like that. It's really nice to hear. So anyway, without any further ado, here's the match review. Cambridge come to Hillsborough, not having a great time of it, but of course we played Lincoln last week, they weren't having a great time of it, we got spanked 3-1, so as a Wednesday fan you don't take anything for granted, but on paper, and as I said in the preview, I fancied us to get a good win, I said 4-0, our way out there 6-0, couldn't really have expected that. The teams lined up more or less as we uh, thought they would, with a couple of changes for Wednesday and the one change for Cambridge, we'll have a quick look at that. Wednesday made the two changes, it was a Peacock fouling goal, a back three of Story, Hutchinson and Gibson. Obviously Gibson coming in for Palmer at left centre-back. Midfield, Hunt, Byers, Luongo, Bannon and Johnson. And up front, the one change with Lee Gregory coming in for the probably quite unlucky Callum Patterson. Cambridge, they lined up with a 4-2-3-1 that they would, we were expecting them to. Mitov in goal, they also just made one change with Shering coming in at centre-back for Okadina. So their back four was Williams, Shering, Jones and Dunk. Midfield of May, Digby, Smith, and now ancient Houlihan, Brophy and up front Ironside, their main goal threat. Wednesday got off to a great start. And I talked in, I think it was a Plymouth game earlier in the season, when after five minutes of the game at 0-0, I knew we were going to lose. Because you can spot little things. You can spot when players aren't on it. Even in the first two minutes of the game, you can spot when, when they're on it and when they're not. And you can't turn it on. Mm -hmm. If you start a game unfocused, you can't suddenly become focused. You might get a bollock in at half-time and run about for ten minutes after that. But if you're not on it, you're not on it. And there were a couple of little things I saw in the first two minutes yesterday that made me think, oh, we're all right here. The first one was after about 30 seconds. They got a centre-half Johns. He come out into the left side, just in front of South Stand, and he was just trying to play a little clip ball, down the line, and he may as well have been wearing that pudding spoon that I used to have my jam roll the poly last night instead of his boots, because it just went <whistles> right into the South Stand, and I thought, oh, he's not on it. The other thing, again, maybe only a minute in, Luongo, lovely driven ball out to Johnson and left, he plays a little threaded ball through into Berahino, now it's like a 60-40 in their defender's favourite. And Berahino just boom, off ball, spins in. Didn't get there, it ran through to keeper. But again, it's them little things that you're spotting in the first couple of minutes. I think, yeah, he's on it today. And it proved to be the case. It's funny, isn't it? We all like to see good football. Our first goal comes from a route one. It's straight down. It, I think Luongo wins the flick on. Gregory gets in. I've, I've just mentioned that Jones. He had a, a nightmare skank after about 25, 30 seconds. He loses out on the ball to Gregory. Gregory gets into the byline, cuts it back, and <laughs> Jones, he's lost his man. His mates come out to cover him, and he, he goes in. I'll go and defend cross. Well, he gets at the end of it, and that is a right finish. 1 0 Wednesday, and lads having a nightmare, and you're thinking, we're on it here. It's a really fast start from Wednesday. They really got him. Usually, the way we've been lining up is we sort of, I would call it a zigzag. It's like, um, our midfield three, it's like one of them little 
arrow buttons that you've got on your keyboard. I've never used one. Um, in fact, it's, I'll put one up here just so you know what I mean. That's the shape of Wednesday midfield. So you've got Luongo, Byers, Bannon. That's the way it's sort of shaped up. Yesterday, first half, all three of them, they were almost in a line. They were in their box all the time. Luongo, by a one bit, Luongo and Byers play a one-two in their box. And they're our defensive players, midfield players. We didn't really need one yesterday. Cambridge, I felt for them in a way because they didn't really offer anything. Uh, and as good as Wednesday were, I thought they were a very poor unit. Blinding start, second goal. It's, it's down in front of itself, stand here, and it, it's so slack from that fantastic goal from Barry Bannon. But it's so slack from that. The ball in is allowed to bounce for the start. Their manager would have been doing his knot. And when it turns round, Bannon gets after it. Their lad's not even bothered. I don't know if it's laziness or whether he's just not aware or what it is, but he just lets him get a run on him. Don't really attempt to close him down, and the rest of them are standing off. Can't take anything away, though, because when it opens up like that and you've got to play with Bannon's quality, you're asking for trouble. That is a fantastic goal. Easily, easily goal at game. When you've scored six goals of quality, the goals we've scored, taking out the own goal, that's maybe in that... Uh, Maybe in that easy, but what an absolutely fantastic strike! And it's you can't believe what you're seeing, really. We talked about Luongo and Byers were completely dominating that midfield area. But we talked the other week, there was a goal, don't know if it was at Crew, there was a, I think it was a sort of similar one at Donny. Luongo's just got that ability when he gets in and around the edges of the box down either side, he do not always look for the cross, he's very calm and assured in there, and he, he do not mind putting his foot on the ball. Let it man run past him and just doing a cut back to edge of box. Did that after about 15 minutes and Byers just fired one of at bar. But it was just intent after intent for Wednesday and they're just rattling shots in from all angles. Hunt, Byers, Luongo, they're all having a go. I mean, I'm almost feeling a bit for Cambridge. I'm, I'm really enjoying what Wednesday are doing and we were completely dominating possession. They just can't get a, a grip of the ball. And they didn't really have any sort of decent spell of possession till about 20, 25 minutes which I think it shows the sort of problems that they were facing against us. They just could not keep hold of the ball. 25 minutes into the game, Johnson beats three men, gets into the box, blasts a shot, which their keeper has to make a, a good save off deflection from. And at this stage, Jordan sturdy has got off injured. And I, I am a bit sad, and I have timed it. He was off the pitch for just under six minutes. Made no difference. We completely still dominated him piling forward he's in dressing room having his head put back together after a clash of heads made absolutely not one jot of difference they have a spell it's about a minute or two minutes when they're actually using the ball quite well that Brophy down the left hand side and, and Hulahan are, are trying to link up but the movement from the rest of their players isn't very good the first touch is out of the window um, and you can tell at this stage that it's going to be a landslide. Even though we've only got the two goals, you can tell it's going to be a landslide. They've just got nothing about them up front. They look, they look really toothless. And at the back, they're all over the shop. And Wednesday's movement is, is killing them. As I said, when they were setting up for this game, they're probably aware of Gregory and Berahino and the threat that they, they possess and Bannon getting forward. What they probably weren't expecting was that Byers would be bombing in there, Johnson, Hunt, Luongo... It was like a blitzkrieg at times. Yeah, so we've got Gregory and uh, Berahino up front. I was interested to know how they'd work as a pair. I think the best game I've seen from Gregory this season was the Sunderland game when he played with Canberra, and they linked really well. Canberra were winning a lot in the air, and, and Gregory were just getting in and around him, picking up the ball off him, little one-tools, and, and making the most of the space that had been created. So I thought to myself, I think Greg probably works well with a big target man like that, which is why I was a bit surprised Patterson didn't play. Now, better he know more than we paid Dad and Moore's faith in him. But I did wonder how they'd work as a pair. Um, so I was keeping my eye out for that. And amazingly, it was the 28th minute before either of them two linked and made a ball to the other one. Which in a game when you're completely dominating a team as we were, I thought was quite surprising. It was a, a long ball in... Gregory gets the knock back and better he know it's a fantastic half volley, 30 odd yards, clips the post. I mean, it looked like it would have goal all ends up. It looked like it swerved away a little at last minute. 
fantastic effort, probably deserving of a goal. In many ways, I think it was probably better than the goal he scored a minute later, but amazing, really, that it was 28 minutes before those two had actually linked together. Talked earlier in the season, Arrogate game, uh, about Berahino, how he's got that nice little move, and we used to do it a lot at West Brom, where he'd have it back to goal, and sometimes he'd touch it back to midfield and then spin, or he'd touch it to side and spin. Did it against Doncaster. First saw it against Harrogate right back at the beginning of the season. Done it all afternoon yesterday. And it's something they couldn't live with. David, David Ayrshire used to do it a lot as well. Little touch out, make just a couple of inches and get the shot away. And I've talked about it in that Doncaster game. If you can create a foot close in where you are, where the goal is, you're opening it right up. And I've always said, create an inch at this side, it creates a metre at that side, and that's what he did so brilliantly in this game. Little touch makes just a bit of space, opens everything up for that strike. Did it just a couple of minutes before his goal, little ball in for Bannon, turned, got a shot away, and then, of course, he does get his goal. Lovely little ball from Bannon. Touch, turn, hit. Fantastic strike, and he looks well away. And again, talked in that last video, you can see the strength in his upper body. There's absolutely no doubt he has been hammering the gym. No doubt at all. Uh, I've seen one or two people saying, oh, it's a bit of a flash in the pan. I don't think it is. I think you've been able to see him building up to this. I think you've seen in his appearance him getting stronger physically. And as we talked about before, if you've got that body strength, but you're quite small, it just gives you that centre of gravity to spin. Old people off in spin, and he'd be fantastic that yesterday. The first goal is a great example. 40 minutes, it's Dreamland. Ball down the left, cross comes in, Story. I feel sorry for Jordan Story. He absolutely thought that were going in. It's palm down, better he knows in again. Alertness, this is what we're talking about right at the beginning of the video. Sometimes it's not about how good a player you are or what quality you've got. Sometimes it is literally just about how switched on you are to, to opportunity and dangers and, and breaks in play and what's going to happen. Right place, right time. Keeper's just made the save. Off off balance. Does the right thing. Lofts it into the roof at net. Absolute dreamland for Wednesday. And important too because we are trying to hunt down that goal difference. It could make all the, the difference at end of the season to that league table. Because the one thing the other sides have got on us is we haven't been scoring as many goals as them. Half time, Cambridge are making changes. They've got to make changes. Hull hands off, probably to save him for another day. You know, he's 39 years old and, and you're, you're losing 4 0. There's no point leaving him out there. Save him for another day. Fully understandable someday from them. And Wednesday, straight from the off again, straight for the jugular. Ball in, better here, you know. Now he's on an hat trick here, and this is another thing about, you know, has people got the right attitude? I think he has got the right attitude. A lot of people there, he's quite a way out, but he's got a good shot. You won't have been surprised, some players would have took that and just and just hit one. But he doesn't. He just stops, looks up, lovely little ball in. George Bears is in the box again. And it's a lovely little side foot loft finish. And uh, these are dead embedded, then it's completely over as, as a contest. Um, and I, like I said, I almost feel sorry for him. I'm, I'm, I know it sounds stupid, I'm a Wednesday fan, super delighted with the result, super delighted we've scored all these goals, but I do, not bored, that's not the right word, but you know when a game is so one-sided, I don't take that much joy in, in battering people and the cricket score scenario. Nice to watch, enjoyable, and you enjoy the, the day and the moment, but I'm always a bit, ooh, you know, and the other thing is it can kill it is any sort of contest, which is what had happened. And the, the last sort of half an hour of the second half was been descending into a bit of a nothing game. Great play from Wednesday, very professional, saved their energy. And we've got a big game on Tuesday, just controlled the ball. I mean, there was a spell, I wrote it down here. Wednesday kept possession of the ball for six whole minutes. We had, we had a tackle or losing it. And in the end, it just comes out on the, the front of the north stand with a, a loose touch in a tight area. But that was it. Six whole minutes of possession. It's incredible. It was such an incredibly one-sided game. It was almost unfair. 
amazingly, because they're getting battered so much, they sort of had a little spell at it for about five minutes. Uh, and it was in one of those one of those minutes when the ball came over, and I did actually wonder if they might have had a bit of a, a penalty claim. Peacock Faddle went up, their lad went up, and I don't know what happened. It was like he completely lost it, and he ended up just wiping their lad out. And on a, another day, another referee, I think that probably could have been a penalty to them. Oh, and I probably wouldn't have made a difference in the big scheme of things, because one-way traffic and the, the scoreline were unassailable for them, but... Just that little moment of focus that were lost, and that, that could have cost us a goal there, I thought. Although, to be fair to Peacock Farrell, I'm surprised he's not got frostbite. I mean, I'm glad weather had turned a bit better for him, because he literally had two things to do in the entire game. A couple of goal kicks to take. Because it's only a minute after that, we've got another uh, lovely little slip ball in from Jack Hunt on the right-hand side, and again... It's that touch and turn we better, you know, the touch and turn, the the body strength and the shot. He absolutely leathers the shot. There's no stopping them. I mean, he's, in terms of his finishing, he's on fire. I'm trying to think of a shot that he didn't actually get on target yesterday. I praise the gaffer as well at this stage. Early subs, he's made a lot of early subs this season. But a lot of people think he aren't, I think... I think if you compare them to other managers, he makes them quite early. But anyway, sensible subs. Big game against Accrington Tuesday. So Gregory comes off. He's had a great game, by the way, Gregory. His hold-up play, his link play, absolutely fantastic. And it's almost a little bit... We've missed him because he scores goals. You miss that. But you can sometimes forget you miss everything else that he brings. His hold-up play, his link play yesterday were absolutely brilliant. Um, Although again, as a as a pair, it's odd. It was only two minutes before he came off that he linked for the the third time with Benahino, and in I think it was fifty six minutes, those two had only actually linked three times. Which, listen, they both had a blinder. One scored three goals, and Gregory's given one of the best link play performances from a set forward this season. Both had absolute blinders as individuals, but when one's not scored in a hat trick and things are a little bit tighter, do they need to work a little bit more as a partnership? Maybe I'm just old-fashioned. Maybe you don't need partnerships anymore. Maybe if you've got two strikers, both having a blinder, that's good enough. Maybe. But I do like to see my forwards linking a little bit more than they link. If both had blinders in their own right as a partnership, I'd like to see them working with each other a little bit more. That's just, just how I am. The one thing I would say, though, is both got game intelligence... I saw a lot more, talked about over week with uh, Benahino and, and Patterson. A lot of times they were going for the same ball. Yesterday, Gregory and Benahino, we were seeing a lot of that. Crossing over, taking the defenders away, the little collision run, we used to call it. Crossing over, taking them away, one near, one one far. That was very good. I'd like, like to see more stuff like that. And, and Because I tell you, you know, if they do, if they can forge a partnership, these two, they could end up being one of the most deadly strike forces in division, just at the right time of the season as well. Anyway, distracting me, sin. Common sense substitutions from the manager. Big game Tuesday, so Canberra comes on. Iofa comes on to, uh, and gives Hutchinson a, a rest. He'd been limping about a bit for about five minutes before. Still looked completely, you know, fucked off that he got subbed. He was like, Ugh. Uh, but common sense from manager and then Sol come on actually Sol looked quite lively when he come on um, but common sense from the manager game management we've talked about this a lot with Wednesday in the past we haven't got game management look at all the times we've conceded all those goals between the 90th and 95th minute um, we did work it out it was something like 55 of a four year window uh, because we didn't have it good game management yesterday 68 minutes, they actually have a chance. And this is the thing about taking your foot off the pedal. You know, we're completely safe. We're just knocking the ball about for fun. And sometimes it can become a little bit too easy. Crossing from the left-hand side, it was their left-back dunk who got on the overlap, crossing and the, the sub that they brought on Nibs. He gets up, heads it, and actually pick up for like to do a bit of work because I don't think he was expecting it to go over there. And he had to get across. Their lad should probably bury it. But again, it's just a warning chance, a warning sign. You don't always get things your own way. There's always that moment in a, in a game or in a fight. Sorry, I was just thinking about a boxing last night. I don't know if you saw it. 
unbelievable last last second um, but there's always the warning signs you've got to be focused for a full 90 minute no matter what the score line no matter who you're playing 75 minutes Berahino comes off gets the stand innovation which is performance fully deserved I mean I'll talk about that in a bit fantastic game from him and again good management from Darren Moore because I know it sounds daft but a little thing like that bringing a player off to take that evasion I does I do think builds and help, helps with that connection between the crowd and the player because he's, he's not had the easiest time since he came here uh, so again I think that's good management Cambridge actually have another chance right and nibs good feet uh, on edge of box uh, gets a shot away Good strong hand actually from Peacock Faddle around foot up post. Uh, and it's almost like they've sort of really oh, shit a bust bucket. We've got hammered anyway. Let's just let's just try and enjoy little fractions we can from day. Um, so there a couple of times. O'Neill has a little chance at end, but as a contest it we're dead at half time. So it, it, half an hour of nothing and then they're just having a couple of pot shots at end. Um, but they had a completely dead contest as such. Oh, Stuart Gray. 6-0. I mean, it's a completely dominant performance from Wednesday. 18 shots. Um, eight on target. Six in back in net. You couldn't really ask for any more. Um, and it, if they can take this level of performance on, we've got a really decent run of fixtures. OK, I know. Take note for granted, Lincoln. I know it's always up there. But compared to the other teams who have all got to play at least one other team in the top six, we've we've got a decent running, I think. And with Gregory in, better you know in, firing on all cylinders, I think we've got every chance of, of secured in a spell in that top six. Man of the match? Well, it's obvious, and it? It's got to be better you know. Hat trick. I'll be honest, though, overall... <laughs> Goal scorers win Man of the Match awards. They win your games. I get that. My Man of the Match would probably have been Lee Gregory. I thought he did everything that you want from a centre forward, apart from he didn't get a goal. Uh, worked hard. Link play was fantastic. One headers. One tackles even. I thought he was absolutely superb yesterday and it really showed what you miss with him. Um, I just thought it was a fantastic all-round centre-forwards performance. I thought it was absolutely terrific. Bannon, I thought he completely dominated midfield. Him, Byers and Luongo, untouchable in there at times. It's hard to think of anyone who really didn't give a, a good display. But again, I've got to compound that and, and say that's against a Cambridge team that really offered no resistance at all. Um... I thought Gregory was magnificent. But for an hat-trick, you'd have, if he got a double, I would, I'd have probably give it Gregory, but he did get the hat-trick. So my man of the match will be Sado Berahino. And I'm delighted about that, because I said at the beginning of the season, did a little video, I don't know if you remember, you probably didn't see it, the sound quality was terrible. But I did say, I, I thought, Wednesday at this time, in this division, would present the best, you know, place for him to get his career back on track if he'd got the right attitude and clearly from that performance and what we've seen the last few weeks like his inclusion at Doncaster when he came on he clearly is doing the work he clearly has got the right attitude and he's, he's putting the effort in to get his career back on track plus let's not forget apparently he took a pay cut to come back here so right from the off I thought yeah that's that's showing a bit of the right sort of metal that so I'm delighted for him, delighted he got his hat-trick, he will be my man of the match and uh, I'm really pleased because I, I thought he could do it and I thought that a more might be man to do it. I want to tell people it's a flashing pan but I think this performance has been coming. If you look back over the last recent weeks I think this performance has been coming from him so delighted for him. In fact I've learned how to put links in so you can watch that video if you haven't seen it yet if you've only just subscribed. I have to put your headphones in there and turn it up right loud because it's before I knew what I were doing with sound and all this sound over. Um, here's a little taste of preview. I genuinely think that at this time in Berahino's life, there is no better place in football, and I mean any club in the world, at this particular moment, with these particular set of circumstances, where he could rebuild his career. 
and I genuinely think this is the best hope he has got anywhere in the world. Big club, slightly out of the spotlight, a manager who knows him, who's been through similar himself, who's playing positive attacking football, they can't be a better environment. And genuinely, I would say this, if Billy Hino can't get his career back on track here in Sheffield Wednesday in 2021, I don't think he'll be able to get his career back on track anywhere. Will he take it? That's largely down to him. But he can't have a better environment to try and do it in. I genuinely believe that. Anywhere in the world. So I'll just finish by going back to something that Tony Pooley said right at the beginning of his career. He said about better, you know, here's a lad with all the ability in the world, all the class, to go to the very, very top. If, if, he listens to the right guidance and takes it on board. That's down to the player. But he can't have a better set of circumstances to try and do it in. I hope he's a, a huge success for him. I think it'll fulfil him as a person as well as a player. And if he does it, it could be a sensational bit of business for Wednesday. I've got faith that if anyone can do that and get it out of him, it is this manager. Sound quality, bleeding terrible. But what I was saying was right, and that's the thing. Don't matter if it sounds great or looks great, I was saying the right thing, I'm sure of that. Anyway, Accrington, Tuesday. Oh, I've got to do another preview, haven't I? haven't made tea yet. Anyway, Accrington, Tuesday. Chance for Wednesday to uh, climb up uh, again because results went against us again. Um, so I'll just leave you at table and I'll see you Tuesday. Hope you've enjoyed your weekend. Fantastic result for Wednesday. Fantastic performance. Uh, and obviously a fantastic pudding for me because you'll have subscribed. See you later.